one of the cool things here is the brush turkey. Now I love to draw birds but the main rule I have on my favourite birds are the funny ones. The ones that look funny. Bush turkeys, oh, sorry, brush turkeys. I keep calling them bush turkeys and that's wrong. Uh, they're actually a brush turkey because they brush their tail around. Brush turkeys look really funny. Um, they're kind of, I mean they've got this very graceful, beautiful sweeping lines. You can see this nice graceful bird lines through but then they've got this just this funny head and I love a bird with a funny head. How I draw. I always like to go out and draw from real life wherever possible. Even if it seems impossible, I'll still try and draw from real life. And even if I don't get a great sketch from real life, it is still better to draw from real life to start with. You learn so much more. You experience so much more. Check out this guy. It's awesome. That's a brush turkey for you. To draw this brush turkey, I've been using my Ink Tense watercolour pencil. I love these ones, probably my favourite from Derwin. And I've got one of these things I got from Japan. It's like a, um, it's a brush. It's got a reservoir of water and a plastic thing. You just sort of squeeze the, and a bit of water comes out. I find it's really handy for this sort of like um, quick rough sketches. I first saw one of these probably about 10 years ago I was in Oklahoma an artistic biker had one and he was sketching a collared lizard with me and I sort of thought yeah it's a gimmick it will it'll never take off and here I am 10 years later using one thanks artistic biker back in the studio another thing I always do is try to do a bit of research open up a book find out a bit this brushed turkey, for example, builds a great big mound that it incubates its eggs into. A little bit more about the research later. So I'm starting off, I did a quick rough sort of sketch with pencil. I'm going over certain parts with my favourite pencil of the moment, which is the Derwent Ink Tense Pencil. They don't sponsor me, I just like their product. Now a water brush or an aqua brush, melting that watercolour great I'm just finding the aqua brush so convenient and I'm also using it because it's what I used on the day as well when I do black on certain animals I like to alternate between burnt umber and Payne's grey just mix those one to the other save the real black black tool later clean the brush completely out with clean water now I'm applying the first layer of red. It's a Winsor & Newton red, good quality one. I'm really trying to really push some colour here. Same with the yellow, especially with the yellow. The yellow can so easily go green. So you've got to really watch that. Part of my research is I love to look at books that talk about the history of how people discover something. Uh, it's really cool to find out that it used to be called the New Holland Vulture. I guess it looks a bit like a vulture. It's kind of funny. And now that I'm shoving yellow on the feet, I might as well talk about the feet as well. These are feet that are meant for digging and throwing leaves around. If a predator comes at their nest, they'll get leaf and twigs and just fling it at the predator's face. So they are powerful legs, but again, the misconception, when people first saw this animal, they thought it was a raptor. And I'm not just talking about the dinosaur, it does look a bit like a dinosaur, which is really cool. No, a raptor ass in like, like eagles and hawks and birds of prey. They thought it was a bird of prey somehow. A lot of that came about because people were looking at illustrations 
not looking at the actual animal alive. If you see a dead animal or an illustration, it's a lot easier to make these misconceptions than it is if you're going to have a look at the live animal moving and behaving the way it should. Another good reason to go out live. Nothing beats live sketching. For the detail on this one, however, I've actually taken a photograph. I'm working roughly from the photograph, using it as reference, using it for colour, but I'm also a little bit from memory and a little bit from the sketches I did, and just trying to get the whole feeling of how funny I think these guys are. I'm using a really fine liner, linerous and a liner brush. The bristles are a little bit longer, it makes it easier just to do smooth lines. Now I'm going in with a darker black watercolour in places. The great thing about being very strict traditional watercolourist for many many years never using white now just using white gouache whenever it has given me a nice sort of mix between like acrylic or oil painting in that you're using the whites and the traditional watercolour so you get the look of both which is cool I now sort of think there's no real rules, there's no cheating, you just use whatever you can to get the image. Whatever works best to make the image, that's my rule. I'm using a watercolour paper so I'm not really getting any really sharp lines and that kind of works because it's a, a bird with feathery bits. However, it would have been nice to use a slightly smoother paper to get some sharpness around the beak and the claws. The brush turkey is interesting in that instead of sitting on its eggs, it incubates them in the same way that a crocodile would. Builds up a great mound of leaf litter and it will get the eggs in there. A male will look after it, females lay the eggs in there. The male will guard it and will always be popping the beak into this great big giant mound to see what the temperatures are like. If it's too hot, he will open up it a bit and use his tail to brush or fan. And if it starts getting too cold, he'll again dig up and put the leaf mulch over top and let it decompose and warm up. So they're very sensitive about getting the temperature just right. You can see as I'm working on the tail here, the finer details. And I'm using, again, the fine liner, because it's good for doing those lines. But I'm also not just using black watercolour paint. I'm also using a bit of white gouache for some of the highlights on the feathers as well. So. Once I have the Payne's Grey and Burnt Umber down, I can sort of play around with putting darks and lights over top of it and letting that colour sort of shine through, yet still giving the overall appearance that the bird is black. I'm really working well on the tail. The tail is such a feature. One of the reasons they realised it wasn't a vulture is because vultures have 12 tail feathers whereas this animal has 18 and even though it's a funny looking bird a head like a dinosaur it does have a very elegant and beautiful tail now if you just go to draw an animal smack in the middle of your page like this it always helps to ground it so it doesn't look like it's just floating around you put a bit of a shadow underneath and rather than just painting a shadow, I'm just painting the leaf litter underneath and leaving the rest all around it white. And this gives you a feeling of not only the relationship the bird has with leaf mulch, dry twigs and stuff to build a mound with, but also gives it a feeling that it's actually 
grounded down standing on something. So there you go, that's pretty close to a finished piece. I'm fairly happy with that. But it's not completely finished, not until I scan it. Once I scan it, I then upload it to Redbubble. I then make it available for people to buy prints of, uh, or they can buy a whole heap of other fun products too, like cups and clocks and hoodies and whatever. That's all there on the Redbubble site. I'm gonna leave a link to that Redbubble site below, just in case you want a brush turkey hoodie or bath mat. Crazy amount of uh, products. Some of them I, I just sort of think are just funny, but, but as an artist you have to make a living and one of the best ways is to make your work available somehow. This is how I choose to do it. I'm going to leave you with this turkey who has taken an interest in my water. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Catch you in the next one. See you later.